today's video was uh, inspired by comments and feedback that I've had over the course of the last couple of months on the videos and this one in particular goes out to a, a lovely feedback we had from Alex asking about firewall manipulation with PowerShell. So let's jump into how this works. Now first of all make sure that you have a PowerShell terminal open and you're running as administrator. Then we're going to look at existing rules. So if we use the get net firewall rule uh, with no filters, you can see it's just going to return a list of every rule possible on the system. So let's try to filter this a little bit and we'll do a select uh, first rule in the list just to see what the output is. Now you'll be able to see that you have a name, you have groups, you have display names, you have platforms. Um, you'll even have whether this is uh, applying to a particular firewall policy or not. So let's take as an example Smite. So Smite is a uh, perfectly good game that I happen to play from time to time and you'll see it applies to profile public. So if I want to then see okay what ports is Smite allowed to use I can then pipe this into the get uh, net firewall ports filter and you'll be able to see that what ports are coming back. So in this case, because it's bound by the executable, um, Smite can in fact use any ports it wants. Now if uh, we had the option of Smite being uh, part of a group, we could actually do display group and we'd be able to see all the associated rules. But since in this case it's a standalone rule, um, we really can't see multiple ones there. So let, let's move on and we'll come back to that in our demonstration. So now we're going to go ahead and create a new firewall rule called SSH server. And you can see this is a very simple, straightforward uh, configuration. And all I've done is enter the ports. Now, if I want to do a display of that, I can then just simply go and use the SSH uh, star and then return the matching rules to my query. So here we have the direction, the profiles, and, and you can see it's any because I didn't specify. And you can also see uh, whether it's enabled, disabled. By default, when you create a new one, it's enabled, although we could disable that as well. So what other things can we do? Well, let's pretend as an example we want to remove this rule, first of all. So we've added remove seems like a next logical function. Um, name would seem to be the logical choice, but in fact, we're actually going to use display name because name doesn't actually list as a parameter and we can then check and see whether we get a response as you can see there's nothing there anymore so let's move on to the next uh, possible example what if you create multiple rules and you're associating them by groups so here we're going to do a head, uh, SQL server rule so we're going to add uh, first uh, port which is the standard SQL port we're going to add the SQL admin port and in both cases we're going to use the dash group so then both now groups to the ID of SQL. So if I do a get uh, network, sorry, get net firewall uh, rule and then pipe the group, and in this case SQL, we should get all the associated firewall rules. So as you can see, we didn't get just one output, we in fact got two. So we have both of the rules, whilst previously we were only looking at a single rule at a time. Grouping firewall rules obviously makes it a bit easier when you're trying to work out what's going on and if you have an application that needs multiple rules. Uh, we can then also pipe that to the get net firewall ports filter and see what ports are open. Now we can even use that to manipulate or change the existing firewall rule using the get, uh, sorry, set uh, firewall um, ports filter. So as an example, if we just go ahead here and we say, okay, we're going to take the name of one of these rules. In this case, we'll take the SQL admin connection. We're going to pipe that out to the uh, get network uh, firewall filter. And then we're going to use the set network firewall port filter. And it does help if I use the get network firewall rule first. And what we've done there is we've now changed the port. So if we do the output again, we'll see it's moved from the default admin port that we entered earlier to my custom port that I've just done now. So that's how we could manipulate one of those rules um, based on a single name. Now we didn't need to pipe all of it. We could have probably just gone to the display name and set from there, but hey, it's still good. We can also use the remove function and use the display group to remove the entire group. So we remove multiple firewall rules in one go. 
And as always, uh, if you like this, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. And subscribe for more content and give feedback and comments if you'd like to have more videos like this.